This is a type 2 tooth resorption and you can feel the defect on the crown here with your Explorer. So by looking at the x-ray you can see that the roots are being replaced by bone. Type 2 tooth resorption is also called replacement resorption because the roots are gone and there is now a, a detectable defect on the crown and that's painful. So how we do it is we don't have to do a full extraction on this one. We can do a partial extraction or crown amputation of the areas that are still inflamed. So I start my envelope flap here with a size 15 scalpel blade. And I use a feline small periosteal elevator to gently pry the gingiva off of the bone. And here you have to be very careful. You have to put a firm controlled pressure onto the bone while you are twisting the periosteal elevator to twist the gingiva off from the bone. Here I'm, I, I'm afraid that I may tear. See, there's a tiny little tear just happening here. So I don't want to continue um, trying to release it because I am going to tear the flap. So instead I will get my scalpel and just extend it a little bit extra. Extend that envelope a little bit longer to make it easier to bypass that little tiny tear and release it. So you can see here now I'm getting a good release. And as with all flaps you have to go deeper than the muku gingival line which is that straight line you see separating the gingiva from the soft and flexible mucosa. You can see how thin it is because my periosteal elevator when it slides underneath you can see through. So I'm using a diamond football burr. You can use any type of diamond burr. Don't use a round burr because you will damage the soft tissues. So a carbide round burr. Use this diamond burr and you can use a medium grit like here or a uh, coarse grid. Basically I'm just going to remove all remnants of the crown because I know that these roots have already been almost completely resorbed and turned into bone. So all I have to do is I get rid of that inflamed crown that are protruding through the gingiva causing a lot of pain and inflammation. Very importantly, you have to release the lingual side also. So use your periosteal elevator again. Gently try to get between that bone and the lingual gingiva and mucosa. Release it a little bit of the distal root of the adjacent tooth. You have to do that to be able to make the flap, flap properly. So just release like this. I'm moving sideways to release that tissue from the bone. If you need more uh, flexibility, you can you can uh, pull it a little bit and on that. So here I'm just going to smooth everything down so it needs to feel very soft. If you feel on this bone with your finger, it needs to be very soft. Here you can see I'm both kind of touching the edge of the gingiva here and you can do that with a diamond burr. If you try to do that with the round rosin burr, so the round carbide cutting burr, you will destroy your flap. So that's very risky. So that's why I recommend using this diamond football burr. Just trying to smooth everything out to make it nice and smooth. You can see in the x-ray here that I got the crown off. That's a tiny remnant of periodontal ligament space mesially. You can see that black line. But that's okay. It's it's getting it's being resorbed uh, as we speak. So you can go a little bit deeper with your burr in that area to release that if you want to get rid of that. But this will it will progress that resorption, and um, uh, yeah. So now I just took that X-ray. You can see suture. I'm using um, a um, monocle five zero on a P three. Uh, reverse cutting needle. So I'm just going to put three stitches here. And these whiskers always kind of seem to get in the way, but 
Yeah. Yeah. And one more suture. Make sure you take good bites, so at least three millimeter from the edge and about three millimeters apart each suture. Make a surgeon's knot. There was, here goes those whiskers. One, two, and then three. So a double throw and then three throws on top of that. Final one. There's a tiny hole here because I, I, I cut it out, but I was, I was doing a suture and then I changed my mind and pulled it out. So there's a tiny hole. So I'm just going a little bit deeper this time just to make sure that nothing is going to pull through that gingiva. All right. And this will absolutely hold because there's no tension at all. All right, so that was a crown amputation of a tower type 2 tooth resorptive lesion.